Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm here to tell you about my new product from my pillow. Towels that actually work. Watch this absorbency test. Here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought. Here's one of my towels with a nice design. I don't know if you can see this, but you could line a swimming pool with this. I mean, this is crazy. Get rid of it. Towels that actually work. What a concept. I'm interrupting this commercial to let you know you can get our six piece My Towels, regular $69.98, now only $29.98. Or you can save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Also, we have bath sheets, bath towels, washcloths, hand towels, and so much more. And the best part, with your promo code, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all my towels. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Joining us now to discuss is our friend and colleague, Gene Valentino from the Grassroots Truthcast. Gene, welcome back. So so that Joe's just a well-meaning, forgetful guy line is wearing a little bit thinner this week as we move on down the analysis rabbit hole, isn't it? Oh, golly. It pays to be incapacitated, doesn't it? I mean, you you can pull <laughs> these stunts off and, and get away with it. Hey, I got a good one for you just before you begin. Did you know Nancy Pelosi has some secret powers? She, this is breaking news. It turns out the San Francisco 49ers just received four mail-in touchdowns at 4 a.m. this morning. They won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Did you know that? So uh, many televisions anybody... that didn't, didn't need to be destroyed by drunk viewers, 49er fans, I guess. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, consistent with what you and Steve are saying, you've got all kinds of fraud occurring in and out of different elements of government. This is another one. So this, this 49ers won because Pelosi arranged four mail-in touchdowns. That's got to be the story of the day, I tell you. <laughs> no, to your, to your point, there's a complete... Jill Biden is smart if she just lets her husband take a little bit more of a beating on his capacity his mental acuity and capacity to run his ability to be our president right now, because, you know, you don't get charged as evidenced by what the st uh, special prosecutor just did. He doesn't plan to charge Biden. Why? Because of his mental capacity. Well, if his mental capacity is so bad, he gets off on the criminal charges. Whether or not uh, Trump gets relieved of corresponding similar charges or not, who cares? Let's just get Joe off the hook on criminal charges. Let's separately decide how long he stays in office as our president with capability or no capability. But to your point, Brian, you've got Lloyd Austin now back in the hospital. Who's running the Defense Department? Some assistant a defense secretary we don't even know of or have seen. We don't know what orders she's giving. We don't even know if they've talked to the president, Biden, about this issue. And the world sees two serious leaders in our government incapacitated right now. I submit we are at the worst point as in a crisis mode than we've ever realized before, and we don't even know it. Yeah, and, and you know, it's... Gene, we were talking about it before in the lead up to the first hour. We were talking about how, you know, Biden has had the worst possible week. And it's funny to watch the way they're spinning this. I mean, you've got James Carvel out there. You've got Paul Begala out there. They're all, I mean, they're sound, sounding the alarm saying, look, this is bad. This is very, very bad. And then on the other side of it, you've got the the Biden officials, the the, the press the press corps that or his press secretary and everybody else saying, look, this was obviously a political hit job by Robert Herr. Well, my question is, if it was a political hit job, let's just say that is the case. It was a political hit job. OK, let's play that out. A political hit job would have been. And that's why we are going to prosecute. But they didn't prosecute. 
He said, nope, he would come across as a th- sympathetic witness, and much like the laundry list of crimes that Hillary Clinton committed, that James Comey uh, read, out a lot, read aloud, and everybody thought, oh boy, she's about to go down. And then he says, but no reasonable prosecutor would press charges. Well, this time yeah. around, Robert Hur covers his ass by saying, he'd be come across as a kindly old guy that has a, as a, a you know kind of a spotty memory so we're not going to pre- so how can they how can they on one side of the mouth say it's a political hit job and the other defend the fact that he did not choose to prosecute bad behavior and when the next administration gets in there i suspect there'll be a complete enema on this bad behavior that really has showing its ugly colors and is is selective prosecution it's unfair and disparate prosecution it's it's unjust by any standard and i don't know where prosecutors get off deciding whether they're going to prosecute or not prosecute based on medical or mental capacity you prosecute and then let the defense bring up the the capacity of their uh, of the of the defendant if that's the case but to not prosecute because of the mental capacity is is unjust on face. So your point was made. Uh, Hillary Clinton, she allegedly had no in, uh, affliction or um, handicap with her mental capacity, but no one would uh, rightfully prosecute her for that. What, with that bleach bit story and scrubbing the s- server and 30, 40,000 emails or whatever it was? that we're sitting out there now going unaddressed. Oh, let's just let the time go by. Let's let the commentators in the news media uh, get it out of their system and complain about it for six months to a year. And it'll just sort of melt away and evaporate away is unjust. It's an abuse of the media itself. And I think something's got to radically change on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, given the the quote that Biden gave his uh, ghostwriter in 27, I'm going to riff off of what Tyler Durden wrote over at Zero Hedge, Hedge wrote. He said, and yet Biden apparently did nothing. He never came forward to any federal authorities for nearly the next five years. So given that knowledge, why did the attorneys belatedly disclose Biden's possession of the files on November 2nd of 2022? Was it civic virtue, altruism, respect for the law? Uh, I don't think so, because if we really look back, the Jack Smith was appointed as a special prosecutor to investigate Trump for the Trump files in August of 2022. So, I mean, they're not even trying to hide the fact that this is like a, a, a massive CYA campaign that Biden likely knew he didn't need to worry about the entire time. There has to be a constitutional amendment because of the acceleration, the velocity, the speed of technology, social media, and the way you and I deliver messages to the public as well. There's got to be an amendment to the Constitution that holds the prosecutorial elements of our governance accountable individually. Do you think this these different uh, prosecutors, her in particular, would pull the stunt if there were consequences for them doing it? I don't think so. I think think from the Supreme Court all the way down, the judiciary and all of the branches and divisions of justice at the federal and state levels, down to the county clerk levels and the local local, uh, villages, have to have a system in place that penalizes them if they are selectively prosecuting or unjustly prosecuting. And in the other regard, you and me do not hide behind, do not, the the political officials cannot have a right to go after media as well if the hostile commentary from people like you and me impugns their integrity and hurts them. We have room, we we have to Im- room to improve on our side as well. We must be held accountable for the merits of what we say about people that hurt their lives. You don't get away rifling through the underwear drawer of of uh, in Mar-a-Lago to to look for evidence that was never there. 
And then to tell me that Biden can say to all of us as an outright lie in the media that all of the documents in his home were under lock and key when we know better, we saw better in dilapidated cardboard boxes that were rifled through and also which Biden allegedly was using to write his story with his ghostwriter for when he retires, another revenue source for him, is a complete two-tiered system of behavior that must be addressed in a constitutional amendment that does not exist now. If you're yeah. going to tell me, oh, but Gene, the right to free speech is absolute, it's absolute what? To give you the nuclear codes? Is it absolute to hurt your family and your friends just because you're a public figure? These rights, that we all have some responsibility. No right is absolute. We must be responsible for our free speech, and we must be responsible for the way we govern. Yeah. Well said, Gene, and I agree with you, and I think that if you are going to get some kind of amendment of that sort, we're going to have to increase our numbers in the in both the House and the Senate in order to have a chance at passing it, because right now, I don't know what's worse. The corrupt, D, the, the corrupt as hell DOJ that is, that, that is running a two-tiered system of justice here, or the media who is going to constantly run that two-tiered system of justice for all the American viewers to see it. It's really a sad state of affairs. Gene, we got to let you roll. I do want to mention the the, the website, genevalentino.com, genevalentino.com. And don't forget Grassroots Truthcast with Gene Valentino. You can find it on Spotify, Apple, all of your streaming platforms. Gene, God bless, sir. It's always a pleasure to see you. You have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us. You too, gentlemen. Take care, right. everybody. We just wrapped up another episode of Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. And our partner in crime on these wonderful episodes is a guy by the name of Mike Lindell. He's head of the family of My Pillow Products. And we're talking today about my coffee. What a great refreshment after a long episode on the podcasts. The My Coffee, in this case, Maureen and I get the 100% Arabica. It's certified organic, non-GMO. We can get the light roast, the medium roast, or the heavy roast, dark roast. We get it in the beans, and then we grind it ourselves. But the most important thing to remember, you got to use the promo code GENEV, please. And that's on the My Pillow site. Go there, put your order in, or you can call it in. And, and uh, they'll ship, of course, direct to you, no charge. Thanks.